Welcome to part two of my DIY vibrating tumbler video. So we've got the beast, uh, we're going to be testing it out today, hopefully it's going to work well. Uh, we'll discuss different medias for polishing uh, steel, removing rust uh, and deburring bits and pieces. Let's do it. So as I mentioned in my previous video, I had a complete nightmare trying to find the right vibrating media to tumble with the steel bits to clean rust off. Um, now nobody openly says this is the best one for cleaning rust, I, I guess it maybe varies between different tumblers and different uh, builds, but um, it's really really not clear what you should be buying. Now I've watched many many videos, literally probably 100 videos on uh, different people doing different tumblers, DIY stuff, non-DIY stuff and what they use. Um, a big consideration is cost. Because um, a lot of these vibrating um, medias actually cost a small fortune. They really are expensive. Uh, so I've actually gone for a couple of options today. Um, I've got for one you buy off the shelf. Um, it came recommended. I'll explain why in a little bit. Uh, I'm also going to go for something that's not been recommended. Um, it's actually a sandblasting product which you can buy relatively cheaply. A couple of videos that showed reasonably good results. Uh, one was using black garnet stone, which is something you can buy. It's a sandblasting product. Um, I actually went to speak to some sandblasters about this, um, and they said it may well work in the tumbler okay, but as a sandblaster, they don't use it. They actually use steel shot and stuff and glass, uh, and even aluminium oxide. The reason being is the garnet stone breaks down very, very fast. Um, so in the industry, they can only use it two or three times before it's basically dust and it's useless. Um, and I imagine if it's no good for sandblasting, even though there's not the same energy going into this, it's probably going to break down quite quickly in the tumbler. So I have seen one video where the, the black garnet stone seems to give reasonable results. Um, it wasn't like a, a shiny steel finish, but it cleaned most of the rust off. A few videos I watched that again had reasonable looking results used the green resin pyramids or little diamond triangle things. Um, now these things can be bought from such as Harbour Freight if you're in the US, um, but here in the UK we don't have that, so you're looking kind of more online. Uh, and I will put a link to some in the description below should you want to go and find some on eBay. Now although these seem to work okay, there seem to be visibly a bit of a downside to them that they wear out very very fast. So no one actually said this is the problem, however if you watch people's videos, by the end of the videos they've got a tumbler full of green powder and it's a lot. Um, so you've got to assume that these resin pyramids are actually breaking down quite quickly and in terms of how much usage you get out of them, I'm really not sure, um, but I don't think there's something that's going to work for a fairly long time and for that reason I've avoided it. Also they're quite expensive to buy, um, so to get enough to fill this, which is a 7 litre can, so I'm looking probably at 5 litres worth of materials, um, I'd have to spend small fortune. Another non-standard polishing product that seemed to give quite decent results was quartz stone. Um, so I saw a few different videos where they use different types or different colours um, and different sizes. Um, it does seem to give pretty decent results. It may be something I try in time here um, depending on the cost. Um, and I'm not sure how it varies between if one quartz is hard and another. I'm not sure if it's graded or how that works exactly. Um, but one particular video used bright pink stuff that it looked, I'm guessing was about 7 to 10 mil. So being pink, I'm assuming it was from a pet store and it was from an aquarium shop or from yeah, the fish tanks and stuff. Um, and again, that did give good results. However, this guy had a relatively small tumbler and within the time scales he mentioned in the videos, which is about four hours, he had a bucket of pink powder. So even though it may work well um, to clean stuff long term, I'm not sure um, it's, it's got the longevity that I'm looking for. So eventually the hunt for media brought me to talking to professionals who actually supply vibrating media to the industry. Um, and a couple of them wouldn't even talk to me. Um, they wouldn't supply me anything and they wouldn't give me any advice. Apparently my little video, my little tumbler is a threat to the industry and it puts bread and butter on their table so they're not going to help. Which I think is quite sad really. Um, eventually I found a company here in the UK called Moloroda Finishing Systems. Uh, I'll put a link to them down below because they were really, really helpful. Uh, so they explained how the different products work um, and gave me advice on which ones I should be using for this particular tumbler. The first product we're going to try is this, which is this ceramic media. Um, it's listed below on the Muller Rotor website uh, as a 1015, I assume that's 10 by 15 millimeters, um, and it's medium grade. Now it's explained to me that part of the reason this works or the way it works uh, in industry is because it's got the big vibrating barrels or tumblers. Um, there's lots of weight of product on top of whatever's being cleaned. So it's not just the vibration, it's the actual weight of product on top of it. Uh, obviously with this being a smaller barrel, it's not going to have that same weight advantage. So it's going to be it's a bit of an unknown really as to how good this is actually performing in this particular tumbler. Um, also it's medium grade, 
Um, so it's explained to me basically the, the more coarse it is, the faster it breaks down. Um, so hopefully being medium grade, we'll have a good compromise between how long it lasts um, before it turns to dust and how well it actually works. But we shall see. Now bear with me. I know I've been talking forever, <laughs> at least it feels that way. Um, the last little pitfall you're going to come across is how much media to buy. So this barrel worked out approximately seven liters. So I was looking for about five liters of materials to put in there. So it's at a reasonable level. Um, now this is five kilos of ceramic media, which is quite heavy stuff. Um, and it works out about two and a half liters with the volume. Um, so it's not ideal. Um, I'm not gonna have as much in there as I actually wanted, but with my budget, unfortunately, um, say 30 pounds was as much as I wanted to spend on, on this particular one. Um, so that's what we're gonna roll with, see how it goes. Um, obviously, if you're going to be buying um, such as the resin media, it should be a lot lighter for its uh, given size. So you should, in theory, get more for your money, but you tend to find it's only small, sold in smaller weights as well. So if you want to find out how much they weigh, just ask them for the measurements. But out of all the people I asked about the dimensions of the product, bag or box, only one person responded and it was pretty useless. <laughs> so uh, yeah, prepare for a bit of a fight with that one. Because I want to compare between the two different medias, I want it to be kind of a fair comparison. Uh, so I've kind of selected loads of rusty bits and pieces I've got, but in pairs. So I've cut some of these box sections um, from a big beam. Uh, so they've got a nice clean edge, but they've got lots of flash. So it'll be interesting to see if it cleans the flash off. And they're pretty rusty on the surface. Got bits of flat plate, big ones and small ones. Uh, a couple of big uh, coach bolts, which have got threads on. So see if it gets into the threads. These bits have actually got paint on rather than rust. I'm curious to see if it strips the paint off them, that'd be handy if it does do that. Uh, some flat blades, a bit of square bar. We only got a few nuts and bolts, unfortunately. I had a bit of a purge of late and I threw all my rusty stuff away because I thought I'm never gonna use that again because um, I've got loads and loads of bolts. Um, so yeah, I don't have a lot to, to, to find. So there's a couple of M8s and uh, M10s there to try. Uh, see how they go. And if there's room, these big old rusty brackets can go in as well. To be honest, that actually fills it further than I expected it to. Well, I'm going to say it's loud. But it's not crazy loud. Okay, we've been running for an hour. Ooh, so this certainly looks kind of rusty in here. So it's cleaned the thick off. That's starting to look good. And the corners, it's uh, starting to look bright. And the flat's not so good. Oh wow, so the rust was really deep on this, on the bits of metal. Um, it's made a good start on it where it's really heavily pitted, it's not quite got into there. But look, there is no flash on that at all. Smooth as a baby's butt. So if you're looking at deflashing steel, absolutely amazing. And the bolt, small bolt at least, it's uh, well on its way. So, let's give it another hour. Houston, we have a problem. I think we've got a dead bearing. So it kind of slowed down towards the last 15 minutes or so, it was a bit intermittent. Uh, we've certainly got a squeak in there somewhere. So I'll stick it apart and have a look, see what's wrong with it. Um, we have, however, been running for two hours. Um, so we can open this up and check out the results. Okay, so we've taken it all apart. The bearings that on the, the part I created don't feel too bad. Now I thought one of these had failed because uh, they got quite hot in the, uh, in the first hour. So I ran it for an hour, let it cool down for an hour and then I run it again. Um, but it seems to be that one. It's the, uh, it's the main bearing in the, uh, the washing machine motor. Now I don't know if my machine's caused this problem or if it was just an old worn bearing in an old washing machine motor, which is probably more likely because uh, that's the main one that fails on the end of the, uh, end of the motor there. All right, let's go get some more bearings. The next product we're going to try is this, which is aluminium oxide. 
Now this is actually a shot blasting product rather than a tumbling product, so it's kind of an unknown as to how well this is going to work. Um, I got this particular one from Key Abrasives, just out of Doncaster here in the UK. These guys are really, really helpful. They actually took me around all the different options, showed me the different products, and I kind of went for what seemed to be the, the best for this particular purpose. Um, it's kind of comparable to the Black Garnet Stone in terms of size. Uh, this particular one is F14. Um, there is a slightly coarser one, F12, but it unfortunately wasn't available at the time. Um, however, this is a lot harder. So in theory, it should do what the Garnet Stone does, or better, and it shouldn't wear out the same. It should last a lot longer before turning into dust. Uh, so that is a good thing. Uh, Cost-wise, it's a bit more. Uh, it actually costs about £36 for a bag. However, for £36, you get ugh, a big 25 kilo sack. So plenty of tumbling media. Without the ceramic media rattling around, the machine's actually a lot, lot quieter when you're running the aluminium oxide, which is kind of interesting. Um, also, I expected a lot more dust off it, and there doesn't seem to be very much at all, so, so far, so good. Okay, one hour. Ooh, that seems to be doing a reasonable job of taking uh, rust off. Seems to be getting into the threads reasonably well, and it's uh, doing quite a good job on that, I think. And this is the one I was interested in. Um, the ceramic media took the flash off within an hour. Um, the aluminium oxide has not. So let's give it another hour. So we've got a two hour each. Let's see where we get to. That's looking good. Okay, so how did we do after two hours? So on this side, we've got all the items that were with the ceramic media, and on this side is all the items uh, with the aluminium oxide. So the smaller items seem pretty similar. Uh, I think that the aluminium oxide has done a slightly better job of cleaning that back to steel, um, especially on the flat surfaces on smaller stuff. Um, again, the round bar, alu oxide seems to be the better of the two. It's a little bit brighter, although they're both quite good actually. Looking at the flat plates, again, the I'm not sure why that looks all scuffed. I don't think it was like that to start. So I wonder if it's got trapped on the inside of the tumbler somehow and scratched it. I can't imagine the, the media's done that, so it's a bit of a weird one that. Suddenly the alioxide has cleaned that up nicely. Um, better on both sides. And on the smaller bit chunks of flat plate, and again, the alioxide seems to have done the better job. Stripping paint? Nah. Didn't, neither of them stripped the paint off in any way, really. Um, so if that's what you're planning on doing, nah. Now there's a big difference with these. Uh, so these are the box section I cut off. Um, on the alley oxide, it's cleaned the surface way better. Um, so it looks back to steel almost. It looks like really nice and clean. Very impressed. Got into all the really heavy pitted rust because of the sides, obviously little chunks of alley oxide. So in terms of cleaning that, alley oxide for the win every day. However. If you're doing this for cleaning flash, it doesn't clean the flash out very well. So it has cleaned most of it off after two hours, but it's still on there. Whereas after one hour, this was smooth as a baby's bum. So if you're looking at deflashing stuff, um, the ceramic media is by far uh, the best for doing that. So it kind of depends on what you're aiming to do with your tumbler, um, whether you're cleaning surface rust off or you're removing flash. And again, the big old brackets, and uh, these have both come up lovely actually. Um, again, it's just a chunk size, so the, because the ceramic's so much bigger, it's not quite got into the corners. But the overall finish on both of those is very, very nice, and it's, it's worked well for both, so you can't really complain at that. Uh, the coach bolts uh, look pretty similar, really, on the on the main neck of it, um, where the aluminium oxide's excelled. Again, it's because it's small, it's got into all the nicks and cannies, so I can't see any rust remaining on that at all. Um, whereas the ceramic side is slightly brighter actually, but it's kind of missed getting into the corners um, because of the bigger chunk sizes. Um, the big difference is the threads. So the aluminium oxide being smaller has got into all the threads on there and it's nice and clean. Whereas you can still see, kind of see rust on this side. 
um, where obviously the big chunks can't get in there. Uh, the same can be said for the nuts and bolts. Um, again, the ceramic one just doesn't get in there because of its size, but look at the finish on those ones from the Ali Oxide. They look absolutely amazing. Um, so if you're doing nuts and bolts, Ali Oxide is definitely the way to go um, for cleaning the rust off and getting in threads and stuff. No question. If you've made it this far, thank you very much. Um, I know I said I'd never ask, but if you don't mind clicking the like and the subscribe, if you found this video useful, um, videos such as this take a hell of a lot of time to do, um, and the media cost was quite a lot. In fact, this channel won't even come close to covering the cost of that this month. Um, so yeah, it could really help me out just by clicking like and subscribe, and then hopefully we can keep doing more daft stuff like this in the future. Cheers very much. Take care. Bye-bye.